If what I said to you is not truth, están invitados el año que viene con todos los gastos a cubrir. So you are invited to go back next year, all expenses covered. <laughs> Started this garden here, and so we named after my father this place. Oh, Spanish, Yeah, Spanish. Ah, 
I thought my yeah, yeah, my three is strawberries. Yours too, uh, Jenny Orchard. Also, too. Yeah, where did you plums. Where did you get in uh, California, mm -hmm. in the Santa Clara Valley, uh -huh. Uh -huh. near San Jose. San Jose. Yeah, yeah. San Jose. <laughs> the place first of all we are in the western province in Cuba I mean in other real province and what happened on the map this river here that means the border between Havana province in the real one we are in this uh, Sierra del Rosario mountain range says uh, Sierra del Rosario mountain range a place where around 25,000 hectares of these mountains were declared in 1985 as biosphere reserve. That means we are in a protected area. Hey, look at that. Uh, long shop uh, there 
But uh, very unfortunately, or fortunately, my uh, grandfather uh, fell uh, ill, very dead years here. And both of them, they are uh, newly married, but they, they got to return to Japan. And in Japan, my uh, father was born, so that I failed to become a sensei. <laughs> It goes to municipal assemblies. So municipal assemblies are elected like every two and a half years. So the same. It was so the turnout, the turnout for the municipal assembly in this municipality is 97 percent. This is a figure from this municipality, not at the whole country, but it's pretty much the same at all municipal uh, elections and all the countries. And in terms of urban gardens. This is a municipality in which you don't find urban gardens. Right? So there are only two municipalities in Havana City in which you don't find urban gardens. Central Havana and Havana because it's really crowded, so they're really not a green area between the two. So uh, good morning, welcome to the Kids House. Uh, you're more than welcome, and next our director is going to explain to you something about our house. <laughs> After an idea, one of the representatives of Kinshet in Cuba And also after that, after an idea of the transformation workshop for Kaya Weston that met with us, we did some community science, for young ages, we did some music, we did, we did them some dances, uh, we did them our, our culture we, there is a workshop about the life of Jose Martí, and we do all that with the collaboration of all the artists that live in the community. So they come here and they teach the children. Uh, and those children, they have performed different cultural activities for all those cases that they are going to do today. If you're going to see a small sample of the kind of culture uh, workshop that we have here. Is, uh, this is what we are here for, the children that we have been fully supported by the People's Council of Cayo West, by the workshop uh, community uh, transformation community program, uh, and by many ministries in the nation, like the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Sport. They have all worked together on a voluntary basis to develop this project. That's why we have been moving to uh, to have it here to such a great extension for the for the kids in this community. Because after all, as, as Jose Martí once said, uh, the children, they are the ones that know how to love.
very much for coming today for our uh, uh, small example of our performance. Did you like it? Yeah. yeah. So that's why we need to have so many family offices here in uh, Key West, in Iowa West of People's Council. So we have 44 offices for family doctors here. 40. In general, in all the family doctor houses that you're going to see all through the country, you find that the doctor does do this timing. So consultation in the morning, going to the field in the afternoon, but they live in the same house in which they offer the consultation. So they are on duty, we might say, on 24 hours a day. So any time after that, that they, the neighbors, they want to come and knock on the door because they have an emergency, they do that. In this particular case, this is a very atypical uh, family doctor office because they don't have a space for four doctors with four nurses staying here. That's why it's very atypical. The medicines that we have are very well distributed in, in a specialized hospital. For example, in the case of a child, suffer from leukemia, there is the pediatrician doing the follow-up of this case and this child is remitted to an oncological hospital specialized in that. We have a children's ward for, uh, for fighting cancer. We have different specialized hospitals. In those hospitals, they have the medication needed. Probably you go to a pharmacy in the neighborhood, you don't find those medications. But the medications are located right there when they need it more. And so far, so far, even with the special query and everything, nobody has died in Cuba because of a lack of medicine. Ask a very delicate question. Are abortions performed? So for us, it's not very delicate. It's very delicate. <laughs> <laughs> so abortion is legal and it's a right and okay. it's practice. I work with the community, professional social workers, but also through the family doctor and using also the nurse of the family. We train, for example, housewife to help us in implementing these preventive programs in the community. So the housewife, for example, they come here on a regular basis and we uh, talk to them, we lecture them on different uh, programs that we are passing out together with the social workers. And then they go to the street, to the houses, and they exchange that. Every Sunday from 12 to 3 is the day of rumba after Cuban music. And uh, the last Saturday in the month, we have activity for children, we have activity for old people, uh, and we make promotion traditional Cuban music. In general, we make promotion of Af African culture and Cuban culture in general. Okay? This is our present. Hey, take out the negative. <laughs> and the name, the name of the crocodile is Pepe. <laughs> uh, we are trying to educate the children in this kind of art, African art, in Cuban art. This is laundry bag. Hey, thank you. I like to give a They seem to be waiting for something also.
Nosotros, compañeros federalistas de este municipio. We as neighbors of this municipality. Nos sentimos muy contentos de recibirlos en nuestro CDR número 4, Pity Fajardo. Feel very happy to have you with, with us here in this CDR number 4. Pity Fajardo is the name of the leader, of the hero that after him was named this CDR. Para compartir con los que siempre ha mantenido Cuba. So in order to share our solidarity and friendship links and relations that we have always maintained. Con quienes aprecian y respetan los principios de la revolución cubana. Principles and people with which uh, who re, uh, respect the principles of the Cuban Revolution. En estos momentos, nuestro pueblo está protagonizando una batalla de ideas. In this moment, our people is waging an ideological struggle. La cual tiene como objetivo demostrarle al mundo la realidad de este país. Which is aimed at showing the world the reality of Cuba, Cuban reality. Y como pensamos nosotros los cubanos. Y como pensamos nosotros And the way we Cubans think. También a través de esta batalla repudiamos todas las injusticias. Uh, this struggle is also aimed at repudiating every kind of injustice. Que se cometen en este mundo unipolar. Which is currently being uh, carried out in this unipolar world of today's world. A pesar de todos los pioneros cubanos. And despite all that, all uh, Cuban children, pioneer children. Creemos que existen muchas personas en el mundo que tienen buen corazón. Are sure that there are many people in the world with very good hearts. Y ustedes son la muestra más fehaciente de ello. And you are the the life proof of that. Ya que han venido hasta aquí a demostrarnos su apoyo. Because you have come to this place to show that support for us. Yeah. Incondicional a nuestra causa. Which is unconditional to our cause. A nuestra lucha, enfrentando to our struggle. todas las amenazas que son objetivos. Son objetivos de aquí. Las amenazas de que son objetivos. In the face of so many threats we are facing. Al estar ustedes aquí, nos llenas de mucho orgullo. Your presence here makes us very happy, very proud. Ya que por primera vez nuestro CDR tiene el honor de recibirlos. Because this is for the first, the first time we receive a delegation here. Esta delegación de jóvenes extranjeros. Uh, to receive a foreign delegation in this community. Y precisamente un día como hoy en el que se ha inaugurado el decimocinco festival mundial. And precisely today, which is uh, the date of the inauguration of the World Youth Festival. Our pioneer children are going to sing Guantanamo, so you know. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
dance to Cuban salsa music. It's called S-O-N, Son. Oh, Son, yeah. We have many bands that are dedicated to playing this sort of music. There are many other kinds and styles of music. Uh -huh. This is the one which is traditionally known and takes different moves. We have popular groups in different ways. They dance together, they, they loosen the different couples. Le damos las gracias por habernos visitado. We thank you for visiting us. Le damos las gracias, Pedro. Y I reiterate our pedimos la libertad de nuestros cinco compatriotas que están en Estados Unidos. We demand the freedom of our five compatriots in the United States. Injustamente sancionados allí, unfairly, que no estaban allí haciendo a tierra. Estaban allí defendiendo la revolución. Defending the Cuban revolution. Muchas gracias, reitero. Thank you very much again. No habernos visitado. For having visited us today. Seguimos firme aquí. We continue to be firm. And we wish you, we wish you uh, luck in your struggle. Y pido un viva para Fidel. ¡Viva Fidel! ¡Viva el pueblo norteamericano! ¡Viva el pueblo de Cuba! ¡Viva! Do you want to ask any questions? Because after this you are invited to have a, to share a caldosa, which is a soup, a traditional soup. So uh, before that, if you have any questions to ask. Before the caldosa. We want to thank you for your friendship. Go ahead. You come with our solidarity here and to support the Cuban Revolution. We are your friends. Your, your friends and compañeros in the United States, your comrades. To support, to support the five innocent Cubans in the United States. Emocionados. Emocionados. We, are, we are very emotional with this welcome here tonight because, <laughs> because just to think to come and hear, we, we thought we were going to discuss and have a debate here. We're very good here. Thank you very much. This, all, all of this you have seen here is the result of the word solidarity. Okay, now you are invited to have, have the soup. Come on. 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 Silencio, no se oye. Vamos a empezar con apetito. Ajá, ahí. Dale, dale, empieza. Uno, dos, tres.
Avenue that we see down with the Fargo. Decimos, abajo el bloqueo. Libertad para los cinco cubanos. Y que viva la amistad entre los pueblos de los Estados Unidos y Cuba. So this book, this book was written by one of the five men in prison now in American jails because of being accused of spying on different American organizations. Este joven se llama Antonio Guerrero. So the name of the author is Antonio Guerrero, Nosotros one of these queremos, five men. Queremos hacerle llegar este libro I would like to give this book to you so that you lo lean. read this book and Está escrito en español y en inglés. it's in Spanish and in English. Oh, okay. Y también lo comuniquen a su familia, a sus amigos. So that you pass this book around. El que quiera conocer la sencillez de estos jóvenes. Están, so that you get eh, to know the hopefulness of these young people that are in jails now. Están presos del imperio en esta patria y a compartir con nuestro pueblo. So despite the American blockade to the island, uh, Cuba's people continue moving forward in education, public health, in the biotechnological sector. So in all the fields of the economy, we continue moving forward. And we feel very grateful to visitors like you, the Brady Embargo, to come here to exchange with us. So sí. thank you very much. Now, in, in the, nombre de los game, the baseball games, and to the right we're going to be passing also the complex of swimming pools uh, for bike racing, the st bike racing stadium right here. So everything that you see around here was done in within a year, between um, 1990 and 1991 was uh, very quickly done using this movie gate system. This is uh, the swimming pool uh, complex, the bike racing complex, stadium. So by the way, for the first time in history, so we're going to enter into Matanzas province. <laughs> The famous Dr. Ubertino Costa, that is uh, the director of this clinic, and that you know already. <laughs> the doctor was in holidays, but he was kind enough to receive us. You know English? Do you know English? Okay. So one day, six years ago, nosotros concebimos hacer una medicina bioenergética integral. So we first came up with the idea of having a bioenergetic and integral medicine. Tomamos también ejemplo de la Universidad de en Seattle. So there is a university in Seattle that we use as an example for start. Ellos hacen una naturopatía. So they do a kind of natural uh, path, natural path. Natural Because, for example, our national hero, Jose Martin, Jose Martin, he said once, la mejor medicina es la que precava. The best medicine is the preventive medicine. Además, mi padre. He also said, my country es la is mankind. Y la medicina debe ser gratuita. A medicine should be for free. Nosotros pensamos en que una medicina debe ser el, el humanismo. Es el principio de toda medicina. So we think that uh, the human touch is what should be the basics for any medical practice. Primero, tomar al hombre traditional Chinese traditional medicine. But he is working now, she is working now with the last for uh, enseñar, teaching of the young medicine. Laser blank. This is soft, soft this. Soft place. Uh -huh. This uh -huh. was built for one year uh -huh. for three patients 
paper type. Uh-huh. And she used so much. <laughs> and yes. the, the, he, <laughs> he lost the pine. ¿Cuántos años tiene eso? tiene siete años ya. Seven Seven years. Years. Ya pasó el tiempo de oh. ¿Y cuántas personas? Bueno, people, gente, eh, cada día. Cada día, 30, 40. 30 to 40 a day. Mm. They paint in this mural as a symbol of Matanzas. We are going to be riding by a new road to Baradero Beach. And Macy is a little bit faster than the one we had before. Uh, you know, in half an hour. visit to that place and then we go to visit the prison and after the prison it's gonna take us like an hour to visit this prison we're going to continue to visit the Japanese families that live in the countryside here in a town called Hukaro and we're going to spend the rest of the morning exchanging with them so Harada family is going to be there they live there in Hukaro Google family Minato. So this is the main, uh, this is the main street of the of Nueva Gerona, which is the capital, right? This is basically what we call the pedestrian, the pedestrian street. So this is the place in which you find most of the businesses and things like that along that street. You walk down there, you get to the main park, to the main church. And there are Chinese restaurants down that street. <laughs> Yeah, he was. Yeah. I'm from from My mother lived not here in other country, in other town. Here, here, in the island. Oh, on the island. Oh, are your mother lives here? My mother, my mother. 87 years old. Oh, Nice. 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 So you're Nice. I, I am Nice. So Nagano is where the Olympics were held. Is that right? The yeah. winter, 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 winter Olympics. Winter Olympics. Yeah. Uh huh. Alpes. Yeah. So it's in the mountain. Very cold. Very cold. Very cold. Have you been to Nagano? Have you gone? I never, I never. You've never been to Japan? No. 
you want to go? Of course. No. <laughs> but your mother who is our only Nisei on this trip. Sorry, the Nihon no there. Starshi. 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 Hmm? Well, that's what Starshi. So, uh, I'm surprised he speaks at all. Who do you speak to in Japanese? Japanese uh, with my mother. Mother. With your mother? Yeah. Only. Your mother speaks Spanish? Or Spanish. No. Uh, a little. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> because uh, I born about four months after my mother arrived to Cuba. Oh. Then made in Japan and born in Cuba. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> from, from Okinawa. Oh. Yes. This is a factory that has been producing ceramics for a long time with the material that they call kaolin. So, you know, it's a natural um, component that you obtain right here in, uh, in some fields in the island of the youth. Estamos ahora en el departamento de decoración que es donde eh, se realizan los trabajos decorativos a diferentes piezas que nosotros tenemos. So right now we are in the decoration department. This is where they paint the, the pieces that they produce here. Y se aplican en este caso distintas técnicas decorativas. Pueden ser flexados. So there are different kinds of decorating techniques that they apply here. So this being always part of the tradition of the factory. Right now they're not doing that because they said that they don't have the tires anymore. <laughs> but when the visitors they used to come down here, they used to take one of those tiles and to sign and they do a tile in remembrance of that visitor. So every visitor passes down here, they left a tile that they prefer and they put it in that um, kind of mural. So each tile is a particular piece that has come to this to this place. It's like a book, but very original. So the temperature inside is like over 1,000 Fahrenheit to 300. Oh, no. 
you know, in each floor they have like 93 cells or something like that. So it's a really big uh, prison. We're going to be meeting with a uh, historian guy here that is going to tell us about it. <laughs> Listen to this. Yeah. So this is this is an original photo of the Juliet prison in the States in Illinois. Mm -hmm. So the original uh, design we copied from that jail. <laughs> Most of the Spanish. Juliet. So in between 1939 and 1946, in you know, the Second World War, in Cuba, uh, they opened four concentration camps. Five. So the largest one was uh, this one right here. So these two buildings were the ones used uh, as the concentration camp. So there were not only Japanese people, but also people from Japan and from Italy that were interned in those uh, camps. This is a photo of the Japanese. So Luis, what were the other four counts? Donde estaban los otros cuatro counts? One in Pinal del Rio, province, one in Tamahuay, province. One in Havana City and one in the eastern parts of the country. There were some Japanese people that were also, so the largest number that were interned here, but there were some Japanese that were interned in the concentration camp in Pinal del Rio. So this is different kind of weapons that the prisoners they made themselves. Uh, a photo taken during the first days of the triumph of the Cuban Revolution. Uh -huh. during, um, during a rally for the punishment of all criminals during the Batista administration. So there is a... So as a way of psychological approach, they keep those balls, you know, 500 watts, on all day long. And, and she was mentioning that most of these Japanese that used to live here, they lost their lungs. Mm -hmm. In one of the rooms there is an act, which is like the act of the trial or something that states that these people, mm -hmm. he lost their lungs. So when they left prison, they has lost the lungs that they owned before entering into prison. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, so the, in the case of um, in the case of the German, in the case of the Italian prisoners or the German prisoners, so they chose when 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 they when they signed the end of the war, they just left the prison, just mm -hmm. right away. But in the case of the Japanese, it was not like that. They stayed here for a long time after that because they were losing many property, and so it was not in the best interest of the people with money to release the Japanese. So, for example, he was telling us that during those years, uh, they lost a business, a private personal business that they had that was an ice cream maker. They have an ice cream maker and they have a store for selling that ice cream. And they lost that, so they confiscated that. And in within 16 months, they also lost two um, brothers of the family because of that situation. So at that time Cuba was like a colony of the states. Mm -hmm. We call it neo-colony, mm -hmm. a neo-colony of the states. So Cuba was um, was serving to the best interests of the United States. So all those uh, people from you know German, Italy, Japan, they were taken into these uh, camps down here as prisoners. Mm -hmm. yeah, we have a of and yeah, the yeah. So they were not a colony like yeah, in the yeah, case yeah. of the Japanese. For example, Italians, there were only 25. Oh. So from Germany, from Germany, like 36 or something only. And you know Luis, uh, 
the war in Europe ended before the war in Japan. So were they released right at the end of the war in Europe, in victory in Europe? Dice que la victoria, eh, que la guerra en los Estados Unidos, la guerra en Europa. So even when Japón uh, signed peace, the prisoners, the Japanese prisoners, were kept here for long, for longer time. There's a lot of discrimination. So for example, the Germans they could read, they could have books, and the Japanese they couldn't. Right? We heard that the visitors had to speak in Spanish when they came. That's right. Dice que yo que los prisioneros, que cuando las visitas visitaban los descendientes tenían que hablar en español, no podían hablar en su idioma. Yeah, Were there ever any documents found uh, saying that the United States ordered the internment of the Japanese here? Tienen algún documento, tienen algún documento, sabes si algún documento era que pruebe que los Estados Unidos detenieron a Cuba que internaran prisioneros japoneses o que o que comente este tema, sabes si existe algún documento de esto. Yo no me he grabado, desde mi degradación solamente fue sobre el campo de de concentración, existen gacetas y eso donde lo declaran la guerra de Cuba como los extranjeros, como le llamaban extranjeros enemigos del país. Si hay eventos so gacetas actually, y hay expedientes también que... Actually, my PhD was about that. Oh. And so, there are many documents about it. They used to have a, a gaceta, a newspaper, in which they used to publish that. And she, for example, remembers one when everything is started and said, well, we have to take the, the, the enemies in within our borders. We have to take to prison the enemies in within our borders. So there were newspapers that contained all the news and all the different uh, agreements and things between the both nations. How do you call it? The Gazette? The Gazette of the Republic. So the official, uh, the official Gazette of the Republic. So the Republic official newspaper is Gazette Official de la Republic. We still publish that, of course. This so in the archives here, we still have some documents and photos that is not uh, for exhibit, of course, but we have those documents wow. with you know, when, when, when the government, they received the order to imprison uh, the Japanese population all through the island. Uh, for some, it was easier than for the others, for example, for some, you know, they went into a house, there were Japanese there, and so they took it to prison. But if the Japanese were considered to be spies, spies in the country, then there was something else. So in my family, for example, there were five Japanese also working with my father, and they were considered spies. Mm -hmm. So the treatment was even worse because they were two, two common prisons in different parts of the country for coming here and to join the rest of the Japanese. There was not a real possibility for them to be spies because they immigrated in 1914, right? <laughs> 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 they some of them stayed in Havana City, others, you know, went back to King, some others stayed in other provinces. But they stayed in Cuba. Todos se quedaron en Cuba. Sí, sí. So they all stay in Cuba from his family. Why, why was it just the men? Hmm? Why was it just the adult men? What do you mean? Uh, well, only, only, uh, in the United States is everybody, all Jap, the mother or the children. In Cuba, it was just the men. Ah, yeah. But why? Dice que porque en Cuba solo se internaban los hombres. Dice que por ejemplo en caso de los hombres fueron mayores. So the children and the and the women and the families they were respected. And they were allowed to stay in their homes. But they don't know why. Anyway, it's, it's, it's the reflection of uh, the larger culture. Yeah, culture. Yeah. I, I think so. Yeah. The possibility of the Japanese that were in prison here. Mm -hmm. so, 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 because when they were interned, most of the children, they were just minors. There were many diseases and economic conditions. So when they left, there was nothing there. So we have some original photos that they have donated to us. Yeah. 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 Ye
¿Tiene alguna idea de por qué a, 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 los, a los miembros de la familia de ustedes los pensaban que eran espías? Como prácticamente eh, le, en, en mi casa, en el caso de en mi casa, ¿no? el único casado era mi papá, que uh -huh. era el que tenía la familia constituida. Y los otros cinco eran solteros. Because maybe they were suspicious that the only uh, the only one married was my father. The rest of them, there were five singles, even in the house. That was suspicious to them. Separated all the population in the circular jail. Why? Remember, those were not common prisoners. Those were interned here as a result of the war, but they haven't committed any crimin criminality or anything like that. But the circular, they were for, you know, criminal, um, common offender, offenses, like, Crimes, robbery, murders, things like that. That's why Fidel Castro and the others, they were kept in what used to be the hospital because they were political prisoners, they were not criminals neither. Right? So that's why they were there was separation. So let's take a look. Yeah. <laughs> 